Hey guys, so this is a project I should have done years ago and uh, many of you all suggested I do something like this and I'm tired of fighting with the engines on the workbench just doing a test run. You see I've had them crankshaft walk through here before and <laughs> it's, uh, it's just not, not a very good setup the way I do it. I got that white foam pad I've been using and it helps a lot but I want to build an actual uh, test stand for these small engines and You've seen the vibration before, I always knock stuff off the bottom shelf on my workbench here, and it's just a constant battle. But uh, anyway, I'm going to try to keep this video as short as possible. I got some one inch square tubing here, that stuff ain't cheap. <laughs> and this uh, project is costing a little bit more than I was planning on. It could, I could have used angle iron instead of this, but I really wanted to look a square tubing. I know, just being picky. But uh, anyway, this here is a, uh, you can actually make this yourself out of plate metal but I just picked it up since it already had the hole slot this is actually a engine mounting plate for like a go-kart or a mini bike and I got this from uh, MFG supply and it's only like 10 bucks I think at least right now at the time of the video and uh, these are uh, like motor mount uh, isolators or whatever you want to call it got a 5 16 18 thread and these are legs for like an air compressor so basically what I'm going to do I'm going to cut two pieces of this and weld it to the plate here. So kind of, kind of like this. It's going to be on the bottom of it. Then drill, insulate, put these insulators in between this and another piece that's going to run this way. The way it, uh, this is going to be in between the two, and this is going to be on the bottom of each corner of the second leg. So you're getting two pieces of rubber in between there so it help, should help dampen everything on here I don't know how good these are or how old, how well they'll hold up I got all this uh, all these uh, rubber parts off uh, Amazon you get five of these I actually just need four so I'll have an extra one uh, I'll put links in the description that way if anybody's interested in doing something like this and I know I'm not an affiliate with Amazon or MFG or anywhere I buy parts from I buy everything with my own money I'm not sponsored or anything either that's just the way I am. Uh, it might come a time that you know, I am affiliated or sponsored, but for right now, I'm buying everything with my own money. So I got paint for it too. I'm gonna paint everything orange. Just a random color that popped in my head, and I thought it'd be interesting. <laughs> but uh, I'm gonna put everything together first, then paint it after it's done. That way, you know, I'm not gonna get paint on these or anything like that. I'm gonna get it all together, then paint, then put it back together. Uh, this is preset for like a three and a half or a uh, five horsepower bridge i'm also going to be uh, drilling holes to mount like an eight horsepower on here if they don't fit in these which they might uh, i'll have to get an eight horsepower block and check it but anyway let's get started we'll, i want to go ahead and cut these uh, pieces and start welding and don't forget your safety glasses anytime you cut metal or do anything with metal if you're like me Alright, so you kind of see how this is going. This is going to be under that, and this is going to be in between this piece and that piece. So that's kind of how we're going with this. So now I need to get this centered on this and this. So I figured I better get my nuts and washer lined up and all I got to regular nuts, I could have swore I had some lock nuts in this thread. So for right now, I'm just going to use lock washers and lock nuts. 
and the only tricky part on this is trying to get the uh, nut started and everything but other than that I think it'll should go right together uh, I was originally thinking about drilling all the way through and drill this bigger so I can just get a socket on there and if I had trouble getting a wrench in there that's what I'm going to do I want to try that first I already got this centered for the plate alright guys so I made a mistake already <laughs> Now, anybody see it? I welded it on the wrong side. It's still hot. These holes were supposed to be on the bottom. Because these were supposed to be on the bottom. So, I guess I'll just do what I was originally planning on doing. <laughs> I'm going to uh, get a socket that fits this nut. And match it with the drill bit. That way it can go down through it. Because I figure using regular nuts like this, I'm going to be tightening it up every so often. That'll make it easier too anyway. So... Yeah, let's just do it that way. I'm gonna have to now anyway. <laughs> and I didn't get the best welds because I'm just using a little uh, flux core welder I converted to DC. The DC makes a huge difference, but it still don't look like one with the argon, you know, regular MIG welder. But uh, you know, it works. Not the prettiest. It's like I said, everything's gonna be painted too, so it'll cover it up. All right, guys, that took a little longer than I planned on, so I eliminated a few steps from the video for you. <laughs> I did uh, drill out a three-quarter inch hole to fit a half-inch socket in, so I'd be able to put it together easier. I had to use a step bit, because I didn't have a three-quarter inch uh, regular twist bit, so that made that hole down there just a little bit bigger, too. I had to put a washer on the top, but uh, nothing's bolted right now. Everything's just sitting there. I'm going to go ahead and paint everything real quick. Then we'll get back to you on the final assembly and a test. And these bolts are just temporary just to get it to get an idea of what everything's going to look like and how it's uh, going to go together. But uh, I think it's really going to help. It has to help. <laughs> and I, I, You see how I had to kind of offset these a little bit? Because they're flush in the back. And this is not exactly how I originally planned it, but I'm just trying to keep it just a little bit smaller. And plus, I can pull it up against that lip right there when I'm starting it, starting the engine that's on there and that'll help support it too. So that's kind of the theory behind that. I'm also going to drill additional holes later on for mounting like an eight or a 10 horsepower side shaft on it. But for right now, it's just mainly going to be used for five horsepower and three and a half. So this will be perfect for that. I was, now if this was just going to be for five horsepower, I'd run the bolts up through here then weld them on the bottom where you just set the motor down on it and put nuts on it. But uh, it's probably gonna be used for other engines and just that so there's I could do one But there's really no point in it. So I'm just gonna just Put probably two bolts in it to run an engine it should be fine I was originally gonna take more of this and run down through here Underneath it or at least one in the middle just to support it. But it's really not necessary It's a pretty pretty stout piece of metal especially the time you get the base play of the engine bolted to it So let me get it painted up then we'll uh, put it together. I'm gonna clean it up Wipe everything down with lacquer thinner, then we'll get back to you on the final assembly. I probably won't show none of the painting. It's hard to videotape painting, for, at least for me with my setup I got. So uh, that's, uh, that's what we're going to do. So we'll get right back to you. All right, got everything painted. and seems like it's dry. I had it sitting out in the sun. It's about 80 degrees right now. This is the uh, paint I use, Rust-Oleum Engine Enamel. And it's... Uh, Chevy orange is the color of it. So I got the uh, legs ready to go on. Like I said, I rather had a lock nut on this, which I'll probably change that later on if it's a if it's an issue on everything. But so it should be pretty simple to put all this together. So I'm going to skip most of it on the camera just to speed things up, and we'll look at it here in just a second. This is the challenging part, putting the washers on it.
here we go. This actually worked pretty good. I'm not going super crazy because I don't want to rip that bolt out of the rubber. So I got two big fender washers and a regular washer and the bolt. I was going to use a 5 16 bolt, but the only one I could find the right length was a quarter inch, and I didn't really want to go to the store right now just for a bolt. So this will work just fine. If I get the right socket, it might help. I might put two nuts on this just to keep it from working loose since it'll just squeeze that rubber more and more you tighten it. So I don't think I will put two nuts on these. Well, what do you think, guys? I think it's going to work. It should absorb quite a bit of the motor. I mean, it's still probably going to move a little bit, but at least it's not going to be bouncing like it usually is. Uh, it turned out pretty good. It actually turned out better than I thought it would. <laughs> That's why I wanted to paint it first, because if I waited and painted it till it was all together, you know, I got orange paint all over all that, and it just don't look as good. Not as professional looking. I started to cut this plate down, but I just left it. Yeah. Now, in case anybody needs the uh, specs, these uh, pieces here are 14 inches, and so are these. So it's about 14 inches square. This workbench was built 18 inches, so it gives me... You know, a little bit of working room here. I wish I made this workbench at least two foot wide, but it is what it is. I'm going to build a metal workbench eventually. That way I can weld and everything on it. But now let me get a motor bolt on here, and then we'll go from there. I'll probably just put two bolts in it. That should be plenty to hold it. I got a little five horsepower Briggs here. It's been uh, sitting all winter with gas in the tank, so it'll be uh, probably a little challenge to get it started, so it'll be a good test of this. But I'm happy the way it turned out. I almost uh, started to put these sideways like this, but then I figured the weight from the motor would probably put more stress on it. Uh, <laughs> this cost a lot more than I was planning on. Uh, you could probably find everything you need for this for free out of a junk pile, but I bought mostly, I bought all new stuff except for the bolts. I had them and they were new from before, but uh, I think it's right at 60 or $70 I got in this. But like I said, you could build it for free or a lot cheaper if you got the stuff to work with already. Guys, I can tell you already, this is uh, something I needed a long time ago. Brought the engine up a little bit higher so I can help hold it now too when I'm starting it. Uh, like I said, it's been sitting, it's got probably about that much gas in it. So I'm going to give it just a little bit of carburetor cleaner. About three quarter choke. That should help it uh, start. All right, another note, uh, y'all probably remember this engine from the video on uh, the non-contact uh, tachometer and the video I did on three ways to convert from points and condenser to electronic ignition.
huge improvement guys i should have done this years ago but yeah that's a that's that's a huge improvement there it, that's nice <laughs> like i said at some point i'm going to drill another hole for the uh mounting an eight horsepower on it it's just a little bit different bolt pattern and we'll have a real nice stand that uh this collar orange would be good if i ever repaint one of these i think it'll, it'll brighten it up just a little bit but it'll look really good i think so I have to keep that uh, color in mind if I want to paint one of these. Well guys, if you got any questions or comments, uh, feel free to leave a comment below. You'll be seeing the stand in probably the next video too where I'm testing out two more 5 horsepower. I ain't messed with them yet. They may not be worth fooling with right now. I don't know, but I'm going to put this carburetor over on them because I know this carburetor works. Sometimes you got to work with it a little bit. But Anyway guys, thanks for watching. If you got any questions or comments, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll catch you on the next one.